About three months ago, I reviewed the Laserbeam Digital Audio Filter from Soda Beams. It had two bandwidth settings, one for CW and the other suitable for phone operation. The filter made a big difference, especially if you had a transceiver without a narrow crystal filter for CW. It provided a worthwhile improvement on received signals when I was using both the Yaesu FT817 and a homebrew receiver. Soda Beams have come up with another filter, this time called the Laser Beam Vary. It features audio bandwidth that's continuously variable from 200 to 3.5 kHz. In addition, the centre frequency can also be varied over that frequency range. The Upshot is a versatile filter that can be used for a wide range of CW, voice and digital mode applications. Richard, G3CWI from Soda Beams, has been kind enough to send me a review model. And this video is my test of it. The Laser Beam Vary filter is on a similar board size to the previous model I reviewed, about 40 by 40 millimeters. The main difference between the two filters is there's some extra off-board components which you'll need to wire up. The three LEDs are from left to right, the green one for the bandwidth, the yellow one for the center frequency, and the red which only comes on if your input audio is overloading the filter. The function of the LEDs is to provide an indication of what mode you're on when you're adjusting the filter's bandwidth or the center frequency. The center frequency and bandwidth adjustment is done by this rotary encoder, which is also comes supplied. The filter will drive a pair of headphones directly, or you can use an LM386 amplifier module and it can drive a speaker. The LM386 module you see here was reviewed a few videos ago. We've got an FT817 and an antenna set up, and we'll put the filter through its paces, varying both its centre frequency and bandwidth. Now this is the centre frequency mode. You can see that because the yellow LED is on. Now if we want to change between the bandwidth and the centre frequency, we just press the rotary encoder and the LED goes to the green. Narrowing the bandwidth. Now we've got quite a narrow bandwidth now. We'll just unplug the filter and use the 817's normal speaker. Just crank up the input volume and you'll notice the overload LED comes on. This is wide bandwidth. And narrower bandwidth. And this is a low center frequency. And this is a high center frequency. try for some CW signals. I've disconnected the filter. This is 10 megahertz. I would suggest first of all selecting the bandwidth to approximately what you'd want and then adjust the center frequency especially for CW.
What we'll now do is a demonstration on a steady carrier like WWV on 10 megahertz. Go back to the bandwidth and I turn the control a few notches and it's there. So that shows the narrowness or the sharpness of its sides. Just to compare it, this is with the filter in, and this is with the filter switch off. This is with the FT817 on its own. This is with the filter with a somewhat high centre frequency and a narrow bandwidth that's giving DX type audio, which may be handy in some circumstances if there's a carrier that would otherwise interfere with the signal. As you just heard, this filter provides more flexibility than one with just fixed centre frequencies. It would be particularly useful for the Ardent DXer, looking for something to include in their home brew rig or even to add to their commercially made set. On the other hand, if you're building a small portable QRP rig and are only casually interested in DX, then one of the earlier models without the extra LEDs and controls might be more suitable. Thanks to Richard, G3CWI from Soda Beams for the review unit. Further details including a link are below.